Hi students, in this video we are going to see something about the use of resources. Resources everywhere is so precious, isn't it? Yeah, it is always good to save your resources and we'll never, we should never, never waste our resources. So here is the lesson where we are going to learn what are the positive and the negative impacts, aspects and terms like globalization and because of that how we can save our resources, how we can conserve them. Okay, so here we go and to begin with we have two types of resources. Let us just brush up from what we have learned earlier. One is renewable resource and the other one is non-renewable resource. Renewable means what do you mean? You can get it over and over again. Okay, you can renew it like you have solar energy. The sun comes in the morning, goes back in the night, again it comes back, again you get the energy. So it is renewable, day in and out it is renewable. You take the wind, okay, wind energy, it is renewable energy. Water, water cycle, the, cons, the level of water is constantly maintained. So it is also renewable, hydroelectric power you get. So those are some of the renewable sources of energy, tidal energy is there, okay. So all those are renewable. Coming to non-renewable, there are an umpteen number of things that are non-renewable. For example, we have our minerals. As we, as our population increases, as the days go by, the demand for minerals is much, much more. But the rate in which we are removing it, it is not getting formed. That is non-renewable. And we have the fossil fuels. It takes thousands of years to form fuels there. And when we remove it, the demand is so much greater than the rate in which it is formed. Again, so this comes under non-renewable resources. All right, now we go on to our important topic, globalization. Okay, what do you mean by globalization? You must have all been having a globe in your hand to learn geography, or you must have seen it with your teacher. Now the globe shows you the whole world in one shot, right? You can just have a look at the whole globe. Now, how do we look at the globe? How do we look at the end of the earth or the other part of the earth? That is called as globalization. It actually what happens here is there is a, it is a process of integration okay so from one country to another country from one corner of the earth to another corner of the earth so there is a cross country exchange what is what is being exchanged is it anything very serious it's really pretty interesting what are we going to exchange we are going to exchange knowledge yes somebody discovers something in one corner of the earth and it just comes to us in the other corner in no time. Okay, that's exchange of knowledge. Whatever they discover, whatever they invent, it's just reachable. Then we have technology. Yes, whatever is being done or invented, whatever technological improvements, innovations have happened, it just comes over to the other side. Yes, then goods. Yes, right from textiles and other food items and so many electronic equipments and then vehicles, a wide variety of goods can be exchanged from one corner of the earth to the other corner. Okay, then we have the cultural exchange. Yes, we try to take in certain cultural habits or cultural practices from the West and they try to take in whatever they like from us. So here is a wide variety of exchange that happens through globalization. Now we'll move on to the positive aspects of globalization. gives you a clear picture of a glimpse of the positive aspects of globalization. Okay, now this is the earth. 
And how do we get connected? There are so many things that connects us and so many positive things that come out of this globalization. The first one is communication. Yeah, in those days when we used to be small, we always used to write letters. Letter writing was such a joy and such a good hobby. And you know what? When people used to come from other places in tourist places, when we meet them, we used to uh, have pen friends okay and we used to contact I had a friend like that uh, she was from Canada and I was in touch with her for nearly 15 years and the moment I write a letter and send it it would take 10 to 15 days air mail by air mail it would go and if it is C mail it takes four to six months can you imagine that now I don't think you can imagine it you know why? Because of globalization, okay? You don't have to wait so long. You just have to send a message and the next minute it reaches them. That is communication, okay? So this is a very good important thing about globalization. The next one is bigger markets. See, what we can do earlier days, it was just confined to one country or to one area. Then slowly it became a country. Now it is worldwide, okay? So, see now hydrogen cars are being manufactured and from there, you can always import those cars or <clears throat> you know they can export and we can take it so by way of which the markets are becoming bigger you take electronic gadgets how many electronic items do we get from abroad isn't it though so that increases the market so it's a bigger market now altogether the whole world is like a big market huge market okay next is rise in competition see when one country develops some kind of cars okay built on hydrogen or built on uh, cng what happens the other country tries to innovate a little more than that, improve or modify a little more than that. And then there is a competition. When there's a competition, there are two things that's, uh, that are achieved. Okay, One is they would improve on the quality and the other one is they would reduce the price. So there are two things. Okay, So quality and price would be touched upon when there's a rise in competition. Next, we have increase in money flow. See, when they see that there is a nice area with a lot of resource of water and electricity, they would like to invest a big unit they would build in that particular country. Okay, so they are investing on that and they are going to develop and the industry is going to flourish. Supposing it flourishes to a great extent, what happens? A lot of money is got. So there is a money flow. There's an increase in the flow of money. Then when such units are set up in different parts of the world, what happens? The people who wouldn't have been employed otherwise, they get an opportunity to be employed. So there is a lot of employment opportunities. Yes, so two ways. It is also benefiting the country which is investing on it and the country who is going to give the land okay then you have interchange of cultures yes cultural differences we try to take the traditions cultures of different countries and mix it up okay so there's a lot of mix and match happening so these are the different positive aspects of globalization so this is the end of this video and stay tuned for the next video which touches upon the impact of globalization on developing countries and also on natural resources. Stay tuned, don't forget to share and subscribe and like this video. Bye-bye.